Hey guys, John here. For this pigments patch, it was actually a lot of fun to make. This one's called Glitched Acid, and uh, this is what I came up with. I think you get the idea there. So that fire macro, there's a lot of stuff attached to that you, where you get a lot of different timbres to it. So it's very cool. So, uh, so let's dive into this thing. This is kind of a lot of a patch here. So let's turn off our effects. This one's also using the sequencer a little bit here. Let's go to our synth side. We're using the utility. We're using engine two. And let's go to engine number one. It's a lot going on here. So let's turn off our filters as well. So the first engine here is going to be a analog engine. And let's turn them down this fire all the way here so we can kind of see the basic shapes here. So we're going to be using all three oscillators. The first one is down one octave. That is a square wave. The volume is negative 6.07. Kind of sounds like this. Oscillator number two, there's going to be no coarse change for the pitch, but there is a little bit on the fine tuning. So we're changing it by 0 0.120 semitones. And that's going to be a downward saw, and the volume is going to be negative 8.71. Oscillator number three is going to be no change in the course, but for the fine tune, it's going to be negative 0.104, also a downward saw, and the volume's all the way up at zero for this one. Unison, we have two voices. The detune is going to be 1.50% and stereo all the way at 100. And then this through the filter, something like that. Next up, we have engine two wavetable. So let's turn this guy on. So we are using the two science sweeps wavetable, and this is found in the building waves, the second wavetable down. Now there's no change on the coarse tuning or anything like that. We are using two voices of unison and the detunes 1.50%, stereo 100%. And we get kind of this weird sound here. So with this wavetable, we're using the position knob all the way to the right at one. We're not using it to modulate anything. We're just using it for this wave form right over here which is sending to filter number one, which sounds like this through the filter. Okay, next up we have utility engine. We turn this on over here. Now for this one, we have noise number one, and this is tape malfunction, which this one is basically kind of just adding some extra noises, but keep in mind this volume's all the way down, but this is tied to macro number three, which is the fire one. So we turn this up here. Now we're gonna hear that as well as the second oscillator. So let's turn that off. So this is just the noise one. Now, it almost sounds like clicking in the background, which definitely adds to the stuff later on, as you will see. In conjunction with that, we have this sub oscillator here, but we're actually just using this as a regular oscillator at zero semitones. This one is getting sent to the filter output as opposed to direct out, so that's kind of an important thing here. And this is also tied to macro number three, which is also the same thing as the fire. As we turn that down, we don't hear those. So we turn this two on turns to silence. So if this knob is all the way to the bottom, basically the utility engine will not be used. Little interesting thing there. And then with our filters on, sounds something like that. Now let's get all of our engines going on here. So there's no fire here and fire there. So before we get into our effects here, we do need to talk about this uh, envelope VCA here. So we kind of want something quick because we're going to be using the sequencer for this. So we don't want a lot of decay and release kind of overlapping on our sequence stuff. So our attack is going to be one millisecond decay, 274 milliseconds, no sustain, release 14 milliseconds, attack curve zero, decay curve negative 3.20. So we have something kind of like that. So next up, let's take a look at our effects here. So we're using quite a bit. So let's turn off B. Let's go to A. Let's turn some of these off here. So the thought process for this is first, we have a distant sound to work with, but we need to do some corrective EQ and kind of change the EQ profile before it gets sent to a multiband and the effects and the distortions. Because if you do that, if you change the EQ profile quite a bit, and then you have some distortion after it, you can get some really cool tones out that, out that way. So let's turn this on here. 
So what we're basically doing is this first one over here, we're kind of taking a little bit of that mud out, not too much, but it's 112 hertz. And we're taking out maybe a little over dB, 1.13 dB. The next one over here, we have targeted 357 hertz, and the peak is going to be, or what we're pushing for the gain is 1.61 dB. And the Q for the for this for this first one here is 1.23, and then this one over here was 1.23. So. As you notice here, when I click this one, it goes, goes to number three, and this one goes to number one. I kind of just grab the points and kind of move them around until I feel like what sounds right. So I don't necessarily be like one, two, three as a linear kind of fashion. I just kind of grab it and use my ears as best as I can, just in case uh, you're wondering about that. Next up, we have this one over here, which is two, which is <laughs> kind of funny. Uh, this is 2,623 hertz, and then we're adding a 4.68 dB, and the Q is 1.23. We're not using the high shelf or the low shelf really at all, I don't believe. Oh, no, 0.323, so very, very tiny bit, negative 0.161. So, yeah, that's the EQ profile here. And then we, the, we had a multiband after that. So this really kind of gets electrified, kind of really gets the, that top end kind of going. Like I always say, this is always to taste. Kind of just use these bands to your, your, your discretion. Maybe add some expansion or upward compression. Compress it kind of how you'd like to. So, uh, yeah. Next up, we're going to hit a reverb. It's got to have some reverb, reverb in there, right? So this one here, the dry wet's going to be zero, but modulated by macro number four, which is our effects one at 0.21. Pre-delay is going to be 20 milliseconds. Size one, decay 0 0.460. Stereo width 0.5. High pass 200. Low pass 15K. And the damping is going to be at 0.6. Next up, we have some effects on B. The first one here, it gets hit with a delay. So the time is going to be 1 over 4, the fine 0, feedback 0 0.140, stereo spread 0 0.040, high pass 20, low pass 20k. No ping pong for this one, the dry wet's all the way down, but it is modulated by number 4 at 0.22. Next we're going to go into two different distortion modules. The first one is going to be germanium, the drive is going to be 34.1 dB, and then this is modulated by macro number 3, which is going to be also the fire here. So if we had this all the way down, we're not going to be hearing any distortion, but if we turn this up here, we're starting to hear that, uh, that first distortion module here. Next up, we have a next distortion called the Wave Folder, and the drive is going to be 25.5 dB. The dry wet's going to be zero manually, but modulated by number three, the same fire knob at an amount of 0.27. And the type is going to be the sign. So basically now we have everything set up, right? So now we're gonna hit the sequencer. So once you turn on the sequencer, it kind of brings everything to life, right? Okay, so with the sequencer here, there's a couple things to keep in mind here. So we do have some auto regeneration on at 1 over 8, right over here. And the rate for this is going to be 1 over 16. Now, the things that I'm changing here is this gate length here. On the random, I have it at 17.6%. So every so often, or I guess every 1 or 8th bar, what eventually happens is that the gate length for each note is slightly changed so maybe a note might linger around for a little bit longer sometimes it'll be a little bit shorter so it's just not so repetitive like on off on off for a sequence so it kind of gives it a little bit more of an organic feel and it's all randomized so everyone will be different over over time And there's some slight also changes here as well. So under the octave, the first step here is going to be up one octave. Then we go all the way over to the seventh step, it's up an octave. And then the ninth step is up an octave. And then the 13th step is down one octave. So that's kind of how we get that rhythmic vibe to it by just changing one octave either up or down or the same. And then just kind of keeping that in groove with our song. Which is nice because we can always play every different note that we want to or play any note in the same scale and it's always going to sound right because it's just hitting octaves so like i mentioned before this fire knob is very interesting because you can get a lot of different timbres out of this so if we take a look at it which is number three so let's click this up here so this is <laughs> i guess what we 
uh, what we have on here. So, okay. So AN1 mod amount. So let's go to this first one over here. So macro number three, let's click this analog engine over here. So we can first see that this is getting hit by this FM right over here. So this is going to be, I believe it was at 0.40. Yep, we can see it right over here. So first, when this gets turned, this is going to 0 0.40 for the... Uh, for the frequency modulation, which, get, which gets modulated by this third oscillator over here, which there's no pitch changing or anything like that, except for the slight detune for the fine at negative 0.104 downward saw. So this one is frequency modulating both oscillator one and two. So that's the first thing that happens. So next up we have wavetable two FM amount. So let's go over to wavetable number two. So that's gonna be this guy over here at 0.52. So kind of crazy. Next up, we have the wave to fold, which is this over here, because you probably saw the wave uh, form over here. And you're like, well, it's folding, but we're doing frequency modulation, which we're actually doing both here. So this wave folding here is an amount of 0.73. So quite a hefty amount for that. As you can see, it just folds those waves on top of each other. Next up, we have the FX B2 dry wet, which we're, if we go to the FX here, we have the B FX B2, which is both of these distortions here. These two, 0.30 and 0.27. We can check that. Was that 0.30? And there should be 0.27. Yep. So th those are going to be both of the uh, effects, the distortion effects. And then we have the other volumes, like we mentioned in the beginning of the video. So on the utility engine is going to be 0.92 for the side chain or for or the utility OSC volume. So this first guy over here, which is, oh, no, this is the noise here. So this 0.34, which this is 0.34, yep. And then this one is going to be 0.92, which is this guy over here. Kind of shows it a little bit backwards. But yeah, so that's all the stuff that this that's on this fire macro. There's so many things that I didn't know what else to call it. So I just called it fire because it has some crazy uh, textures to it as well. So once again, let's check it out to, to see how it, how it sounds. that one's a lot of fun last thing before we let you go here this i don't think i talked about this one so this first ms20 is the first filter but it gets sent out of this one into the second filter here and we're just using the high pass six here to kind of roll off a little bit of low end and also to get it sent through another ms20 filter which kind of makes it sound a little bit cooler so i thought i would mention that before we close out if you'd like to get this patch for free there's a link in the video description below and it can be yours so thanks for watching hope you learned something and we'll see you in the next video